Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you and welcome down to the shop, fellow maker. Uh, Bill here down in my humble basement and I've got a very special project today and a very special guest for said project. Hi, I'm, I'm Scotland. Uh, I'm Bill's friend and uh, I uh, we were talking one day. Yes, Scotland <laughs> does projects that are a little bit more unhinged than what we, yeah, we tend to do. Yeah, I tend to build a lot of weird crazy stuff for Burning Man and a couple other projects. We were talking about fiery things. Yes, and you guys know that I love the games from Fallout. And I love fire. You love fire? We should make the shish kebab. We should. For those of you that don't know, it's a giant katana type sword that shoots fire. And uh, if we're gonna do that, it's gonna have to be metal. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna have to have some specific elements for doing fire, some some tubes. And I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because so this is like a bit of a multi-stage project. Yeah. So I mean, it's not just it's not just building the prop. It's like how do we build the prop so it's slightly more functional, and then how do we build in those elements of fire on top of the prop or into the prop so that it actually functions in a way that yes. makes sense. And it that, doesn't catch on fire and burn down in your hands. Or you know, explode in a bad way. Yeah. I mean, this is fire, and 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 just as a as a quote unquote, you know, don't do this stuff at home. This is trained professional territory. I actually have done a lot of fire certification and I have worked on a lot of fire performance art stuff. So we're gonna get that out of the, awesome. out of the table and right And that's away. why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you brought a bunch of goodies. I did, I did. I just kind of shake out a bunch of fuel and, <laughs> and fire and all sorts of goodness. So on the table here, I have a very rough design of the shish kebab. This is just something I drew up in, in uh, Inkscape. I purposely didn't make it too detailed because um, I wasn't sure how we were gonna incorporate all of these found objects, functional objects into it. So that's what we're gonna do uh, today as we're starting this project. This will be a multi-day yeah. uh, uh, project for sure. Uh, so why don't you let me know <laughs> what, well, so, okay, what so we the, do with all these so, things. So I like, I, I love the basic design. I think that's really what is gonna be our starting point because with the fire stuff, it's really about kind of how you're gonna build the different elements. And especially with fire art, there's no specific like Lego brick kit no. to build this stuff. You kind of have to use a lot of little different pieces and depending on the type of art piece and what you're doing, you're gonna see a lot of stuff in here that you really shouldn't use to build fire art, but we're yeah. gonna make it safe in a way that makes sense. Good. Um, so we have fuel. You have a couple of different things for fuel. Yeah, so for mobile fire art, there's a couple of different weird little options. I'm a big fan of these little Coleman propane tanks and they work well, not only for fuel sources, but also expansion chambers. And just to go on a quick detail on that, if you're making a fire element piece that has a poofy fire to it, mm -hmm. so it's not just like a, like a torch that kind of burns, but you want it to poof fire and erupt out, you need to expand the gas that's in here because right now it's in a liquid. Mm -hmm. And so we have a secondary tank where this fuel runs out, fills up that tank, and then we release it all of a sudden. And the way we do that is with certain things called solenoids. And that's like a, a, an electric powered valve? Yeah, so what this does is this valve itself is closed by default. And what happens is when you apply uh, 12 volts to it, it unblocks it. So um, the first thing uh, we were talking about earlier is for the fuel. There is on the design a canister type thing right here. Um, it is quite a bit smaller than even the most slender tank. So what we might end up doing is making our fuel like on a, on a yeah, belt I, I, and then running a cable through the handle. I really I think, think that's gonna be the most yeah. the most safe. And I, I think we because we're running at a lower pressure and we're not gonna be doing anything too super crazy, we can probably even do quick connects. Oh, that'd be great. So you Which would be kind of awesome. So yeah. you have this, you have this kitted up and maybe we do an expansion tank so you'll have two of these. Yeah. So it'll look cool Neat. as part of the costume. It'll look more Fallout yeah. with these attached, attached to a person. And then we'll just quick connect in. Um, and then the real tricky bit is how we're gonna make this function, which is gonna be fun. Yeah, if we do. Um, it would be really cool if we can make that happen. Uh, but the main thing is just getting fire coming out of the blade area. And when Fallout, the, the designers put this together, I mean, I don't know a lot about this stuff, but it seems like this 
is kind of yeah. like they thought how this might work. So if I put my if I put my little game designer hat on and I think about this in this weird post-apocalyptic futuristic world, this does make sense. I think these are there's two tanks here. Yes. There's there's one tank here and one tank here. Now I'm not sure if they were trying to represent that as like they're mixing fuel, or this one is this jet and this one is this jet. Like we still may have to put a container full of gas on here because we still need an igniter. Mm -hmm. And so I brought this as an example. This is not what we're gonna use, but this is just like um, one of these little mobile little torches that you can put on these little camping stoves, which is pretty cool. But this, we need something to light up all of these because yeah. when you're using this much gas and you're expelling it at a high rate, um, you can't really use a piezo starter. Okay. So you know on most- Is that the electric thing? Yeah, you yeah. know on most of those, those torches, you have to click it a couple of times, one, two, mm -hmm. three, and eventually it'll kind of light up and work. That's not going to be great for us because no. it's not it's not going to be a shish kebab if it just you have to sit there and go hang click, on click, click, hang click, on click. hang on super mutant excuse me could you wait a second one click, second click 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 it's <laughs> it's not going to work and it's not going to be reliable especially if you want to do a poofy element to it so instead of just breathing a little bit of fire we want it to just just erupt out a nice little jet of flame we need it to be instantaneous yes we do so we need to kick on a permanent flame that we just kick on right at the start maybe that's the one we click on and kind of mm -hmm. click click. But so so this guy here is probably running a little poop, little poop of flame going. Yeah. And then that will set off the rest of these guys. Yeah, it's just we'll have to maybe adjust with the shape of whether we need it a little closer. Yeah. Or, or we could we could even have more in in the design of this in the in the book in the art book. There are many different configurations. So if we play a little fast and loose with the arrangement, all the all this stuff, I don't think anyone will call it foul. Hopefully not. Yeah. Hopefully so not. we've got tubing there. You said that was refrigeration tubing? Uh, yeah, so this is copper refrigeration tubing and this should work out well for our transfer line to get us all the way, bust this open. So this is where some people that do know about fire are gonna yell at me and you rightfully so in doing so, but this stuff does work and you can make it safe. Um, you just have to follow a couple of protocols. So that goes fitting. in there. Yep. Like that. This, this goes in there. Yep. Like that. And then that screws on here. Yep. So you just and then once push you, it together. When you clamp it down, that creates a seal. And you said maybe we put some epoxy in there. We might do um, we might do an epoxy cover or a silicone cover in here just to make sure we don't have too much leak. Because mm -hmm. when you're using uh, propane like this, you're gonna get a lot of hot and cold effect. This, when you accelerate its movement, it gets really cold. So oh. When you have big, so just as a tangent, when you're doing a lot of big fire, we use the really big propane tanks, like the 100 pound giant standers. And when you've got a fire art piece going and it's just dumping gas, gas is just coming out of this thing, you're going nonstop, flames 20 feet high. What happens to the containers is they freeze. Yeah, I can imagine. They freeze and, and it's that instant reaction. I'm forgetting the name of the reaction itself, but they, they will freeze themselves. So that does translate to the rest of the lines and it can cause shrinkage in the metal. And then that shrinks all of our fittings. That's why these fittings are not good to use for fire. But since we're doing a low yield, lower pressure, I think it's gonna be safe for that, uh, for this practice. I think it's gonna be okay. Very good, I, I have every confidence. So the layout, we've got this tube and we've got these guys and it looks a lot like what they had in the, in the prop from the game. Yeah, what's, so I think it's a really great start. What's really cool about this tubing too is you want to get that shape, no problem. We can basically get that molded into that shape really, yeah. really, really, really fast. And since I think it makes sense that we're probably going to shroud a lot of this stuff to give it that cool effect, yeah. to make it more, make it more fallout. Um, I just went with the thinnest option we possibly could. Because we can add stuff on it. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, how we do like a little nozzle end or whatever we. Uh, we could, instead of doing the copper tubing, we could actually just mill out a whole straight piece that just zips on there. So instead of worrying about crushed tubing, we just mill out something with that same diameter, yep. pop it in there, and then we just have our nozzle that comes right down that could be that whole piece. What is exciting to me is I have a metal lathe that I haven't had a lot of practice with. So making a bunch of nozzles out of, would, would aluminum be good? I think aluminum is going to be fine. Just fine. Um, that would be really good practice for me to make a bunch of pieces that are all roughly the same. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ultimately, we're 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 not making something that's going to be on fire for very long. Right. We're not making something that is intended to dump out more gas than one of these. 
and so we're gonna try and keep it at this lowest yield, but also make it super entertaining. Yes. I mean, like that's the, I want to see a fire sword. Yeah, me too. Uh, so for the sword part of it, the blade on this guy here is definitely gonna have to be metal. Obviously, yeah. it's all gonna be on fire. And again, we're thinking aluminum. For that? I think aluminum. Yeah. I, I mean, with the amount of like gear and gook we're gonna have to put on here, we're really gonna need the, the weight. It's yeah. gonna be an issue. Um, that's good news for me because um, aluminum can be worked a lot like wood. It's soft mm -hmm. enough. You can cut it with a bandsaw. I already have all the tools I need for that. Um, I can. Uh, you can grind down the. The, um, edge on it with just oh, a belt sander. Oh, it's gonna look and... really cool too because you can kind of felt in the effects of yeah. the aluminum. Yeah. Uh, and then a lot of the other parts, uh, like I think some sort of metal tube for the handle, especially if we're gonna run any cables through it or, or tubes through it. Yeah. Um, um, the body, I didn't really draw much out here because um, this is like. It's I a think, bit of a mystery right now. Yeah, I, I think once we have some of these other components built out separately, I can make some sort of aluminum plate that goes in there that everything attaches to. You think, um, I, I almost feel like this should be a full tang into that tube. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let me get a pencil. So the tang for this could go directly in yeah. into the, the tube. I could even uh, thread the inside of this and thread the end of the tang and just screw it on. That That'd makes a lot of sense, especially if we're gonna run the fuel, cause we're gonna have to be creative with the fuel. So they'll have these external lines as these extra tanks. What we could put in here is the power. Oh, it'll need a battery. Yeah, we'll need yeah. a we'll need a 12 volt battery pack to put into this this extra little. This might be a good home for it. I agree. Because if and this we... could be like a if this could even unscrew. I could. Uh, <gasps> okay, here's Let's... a good question. Should anything on this be? Oh, a raw 3D print, or do we run the risk of melting uh, it? Because those are pretty low temperature pieces. You know, I think anything from this far back is gonna be really safe. Okay. Uh, it just depends on how much heat we get off yeah. this nozzle. We're gonna get some blowback yeah. heat. So may maybe, like, I think it could still be, I think it could still be <laughs> a, a, an ABS or, piece. Or um, we could do, um, what if it was um, fiberglass? Yeah, I think that would be fine. Yeah. I'll have to do some research because I could 3D print some of these custom parts and then mold and cast them in higher heat resistant materials. Yeah. I'll have to do some research on that before I get started. I, I mean, we're we're not going to be dealing with too much heat because keep in mind, this is where our hands are going to be. Yeah, we don't. And this is where this is going to be held. Okay. So so working with. And if you're holding it up upright, hopefully the fire and heat's all going. Up. Hope, hopefully <laughs> is the key word. I don't know. We're going to have to do some safety testing with yes, a lot of will. this, and we'll have to, I'll have to basically build a dry rig of of the fire of it and see what makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, once we have the blade or an analog for the blade that we can bolt stuff to and we have the nozzles made, we can probably do that test. So so I brought some other goodies too. So this is probably the solenoid I want to use for this just because I really like the size and I feel like we, we, we need to hide it somewhere in all of these components. Is the idea that um, the, the there will be a little bit of gas going to keep the fire going and then when you pull this, it trips this guy and more flame comes out? Yeah, we, we have a couple options of where we can put this uh, this valve. Um, so if we put it in here, we're gonna have the gas that comes out of the container, it's gonna run up to here, it's gonna stop. So you're gonna be live gas all the way back to the tank. Mm -hmm. And then everything up here is gonna be empty and waiting. And so when we fire this, it's just gonna shoot the jet out. I, I, I like it more at the source because it feels a little more controllable to me. If we have this back with the tank, we can do that, but it's a longer run. We might have leaks back there. Then you also have to run power from here, all the, or the switch control all the way from here, mm. all the way back down to that. And yeah. I, I'd, I'd rather have it all in one shot okay. so we can just be a fuel out so it's yeah. nice and safe. I want the quick. There could maybe even be enough room in this guy for this, although it needs to be upright. Maybe like, maybe this just peeks into the bottom of that. Uh, we have our power in there. Well, or whatever we, this thing is. We have some interesting conversations to have of whether we want to see this sword just be on fire <laughs> or whether we want it to poof fire. Yeah. And I, I don't really know which is going to be ultimately the most um, awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think they'll both look really, really freaking cool and be really fun and be really ridiculous. We'll figure that out, I think, once we start putting some of this stuff together. Yeah, because I, I think the test that we'll have to do is the distance from here to here of ignition point, because it is a bit of a jump to yeah, that Yeah, and I, I think maybe we just have maybe four of these. Maybe have a, 
we can we this doesn't have to be like that we can have just have another one of those right there i don't know why there's another yeah. tube we don't have to have that at all well if we do so so there's two different things to think about when you're doing uh fire art things that go poof and things that are just on fire are kind of different elements when you have a thing that's just on fire it's just a small trickle of gas that's regulated usually about a half pound or so worth of of gas comes out you can ignite it you turn the knob, it just lights up and it's just on fire. Whereas the poof, the poof is a massive buildup of pressure that's released all at once and then just shoots fire. Mm -hmm. That might have to be two lines. It might can be a single line that we double tap into it. So we have another T valve here that that T valve, we switch it to just a free flowing gas and we put a regulator on the tank as well. So maybe we put, uh, I don't have that regulator with me, but it, it will effectively look something like this and we'll have another bit on it that has a little regulator and a knob that we can dial in. So we say all on or we say all off, um, or we can say just a little bit, a little half pound. So we can do that and run it on the same line and we could do that with a diverter valve. Basically it'll be another, another valve on the inlet. So it'll either go into this and do the main dump, or it'll go out. So it'd be kind of cool. It might well, be a hey. way to save space. Well, it sounds to me like I have some work to do. I have some work to do. I think where I'm gonna get started as we work uh, towards getting this guy put together is getting this blade cut out. I gotta go get some aluminum. I'm mm -hmm. thinking like quarter inch aluminum would probably be pretty good. Uh, actually, I have some right here. Let's see, Let's see what you got. This is not wide enough, clearly, but um, I'll, I'll have to go to... This is the best that Home Depot offers, but I'll have to go to the uh, Exotic Metals store down in Kent, which is fantastic. Um, but I think that thickness is probably good for a, yeah, for a I think blade. Even if we wanted to go one more millimeter in thickness, just to give us a little more playroom, mm -hmm. if we wanted to countersink any of this yeah. stuff to like really let it sit. So, but I, I feel like this would be really good. That would probably be good. So I gotta go get some metal, cut out the blade, get that with a plenty long tang, probably, I mean, put more than we think we need. We can always cut it off. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm gonna start turning these nozzles to fit on this thread. Um, once that is, those parts are made, we can attach them to the blade mm -hmm. and maybe run some propane through it and light it on fire. Yeah, I think so. All I right. think I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> take an activity to build out the other part of the tank, so. The belt part? We think? Uh, I think definitely. Well, I'm going to get the fire bit working. Yeah, first. yeah, yeah. But so. we want it, we're committed to making the, the the fuel on a belt thing. I think so. Yeah. And what I'm going to start with is I'm going to go ahead and get another one of these and I'm going to do my tried and tested and patented, not, not really, patented. Uh, technique of taking the, the empties of these and creating an expansion chamber. Of okay. It. So cool. we'll have the expansion chamber. So we're going to go ahead and count on two of these. Yep. And uh, they'll be side by side. And I'll just have to kind of build the components for the, the dial and the valve and all that good stuff. And then we'll hook it together and see what kind of fire chooches out. Perfect. Well, we both have homework. Yeah. I'm looking homework. forward to seeing how this comes together. The best kind of homework, the yeah. fiery homework. Uh, hey, Scotland, thank you so much for yeah. Hanging out and uh, doing the the hard work here, or the the, the thoughtful work. Let's oh, we're say. we're not even into the hard no, work. No, 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 we're not. Um, uh, but thank you for figuring all this stuff. I wouldn't even know where to start. Um, so uh, we're gonna do more videos. This will be a multi-part series uh, once we've done our homework. Absolutely. Where can the folks at home check out what you've been working on? Uh, you can find me on level23.com or at level23 on Twitter. And you should because it's a lot of really awesome stuff. Uh, is there anything in particular you're working on lately that folks should uh, check out? Well, I'm working on this with you right yep. now. I just recently moved, so I'm in the process of building my new studio. And Excellent. so it's really just the project of building the studio. With your glitter floor. It is, I have an epoxy three layer <laughs> glitter floor that looks amazing. We just got the shelves in the other night and the tool benches and the workbenches are gonna go in later next week. So very exciting, very exciting. It's super exciting. Well, I'm excited to see how that turns out and I'm even more excited yes. to see how this turns out. Thank you so much for checking out the video. If you're new, of course, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because you don't wanna miss seeing how this project turns out in the coming months. Fiery, fiery goodness. Uh, other than that, um, I guess, uh, thanks for hanging out and we'll catch you in yeah. the next build. See you later.